Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at or doing a study on the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 to 12. And the book of Nehemiah is a very interesting book. It begins in Babylon with Nehemiah, whom the book is named after. It begins with him hearing of the, of the condition of Jerusalem and the Jews who lived there. Now, he was a Jew in exile who had not forgotten his city or his people. His reaction to the news was that he was very upset. As we read in chapter 1, verse 4, which I'll read now, chapter, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4 says, So it was, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Now, what were the words that he heard? Uh, in verse 3, we said, well, in verse 2, some visitors come to see him from, uh, from, from, from Israel. And he asks them how things were, how the Jews were back home, who would uh, essentially survive the uh, captivity. And... In verse 3 they said, and it reads, And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So this was the news that caused him to sit down and cry, basically, and mourn for many days. And, and he was fasting before the God of heaven. So, was this an exaggeration? I don't think so. I don't think so because as we read further into chapter 1, and I'll allow you to do that yourselves, we see that Nehemiah has a recognition that the Jewish people are under the judgment of God for their sinfulness. This is the reason why they are in exile. They had been taken into captivity by the Babylonians some 70 years previously so he seeks god in prayer and fasting as he wanted to ask king artaxerxes for permission to return to jerusalem to rebuild it so let's get into our passage just let's read the passage first nehemiah chapter 8 verses 1 to 12 when the seventh month came the children of Israel were in their cities. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the, law had, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women, and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday, before the men and women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood which they had made for the purpose and beside him at his right hand stood Matithia, Shema, Anaya, Berija, Hilkia, and Masia, and at his left hand Pedia, Mishael, Malkija, Hashem, Hashbanda, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, Bani, Sheribia, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodia, Masia, Kelita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, 
Pelea and the Levites helped the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And verse 12, And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. Now, although Nehemiah was the man who, who got things done, although he was the man who set everything in place to get Jerusalem rebuilt, as we read in the earlier chapters of Nehemiah, he was not the man to do any spiritual work. Hence the appearance of Ezra in our passage. Ezra was a priest and a scribe. He was told to bring what is described as the book of the law of Moses. What was this book? Now some scholars, it has to be said, think it is a book that he had written himself. Some scholars think that he had essentially paraphrase the Pentateuch, the first five books of Moses, the Torah, in other words. And D. Kidna, in his book, uh, Nottingham in IVP, printed in 1979 on the chapter Ezra, Nehemiah, says this, the, and I quote, the widely held hypothesis popularised by Wellhausen in the 1870s, that Ezra's law book was a revision and rewriting of tradition, mosaic in name, arguably in spirit, but not in fact. End of quote. Now, of course, this could not be true. Ezra, being a priest and a scribe, would have had an impeccable character. He would have been a scrupulously honest man and a man of high integrity. If this was true, this would have been fraud of the highest level. So what was this book then? The book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel, makes two important and contested points. First, that what the people called for and what Ezra ostensibly produced was no new manifesto but the foundation articles of the faith laid down at the Exodus. And that's a quote from that same book that uh, I mentioned earlier. So it's interesting to note that it was the people who had called for Ezra to read the book and to read this book and read it to them. Who were these people? Well, they were the remnants of the Jewish people who had managed to stay in Jerusalem, their holy city, the city of their God, the God of Israel. I think it's fair to say that these people were true believers who were also dismayed at what their nation had become. And they all wanted the nation to get back on the right path again. So it's interesting to read in verse two that they were men and women and to quote all who could hear with understanding end of quote so this indicates that there were young people there too so this is confirmed in verse 7 where we read that the levites helped everyone to understand the law by giving them the sense of what it said so we can infer from the text that the people had either not heard the law for a very long time and that some were hearing it 
for the very first time. So what we can deduce from verse 6 in the text is that they all wanted the nation to get back on the right path again. They all bowed down and worshipped God as one man, meaning that they all did it together. They were all of one mind. What can we say then in conclusion? Oh, that we would have the same mind in our country today, that we would all want to see a return to the right path that we would wish to see a return of our foundational documents in public life again, that we would wish to see a return of the Word of God, the Holy Bible in public life, taking precedence in our country again. We can begin, as Nehemiah did, by seeking God in prayer and fasting, by falling on our knees and faces before him, by pleading with him, that he would have mercy on our country, that he would raise men who knew the word of God to lead us back to the right path again. Isn't that what you want? That's what I want. Let's, let's, let's pray and seek God that we'll find men like Nehemiah to lead us back into the truth again. So I want to thank you for joining me in this video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.